All right, all right, all right. Welcome back, you and glorious bastards and magnificent. It is I, Doc Camo, and we're back for my thought of the day. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, Biden and the Democrats' push for your guns. We're going to talk about um, how Doc is partly responsible for the increased number of infections going on. Now, this is outside of COVID, so like throw that out of your mind just in general. It came up. It was interesting. We needed a new story, and we've been talking about COVID. I want to talk about something different, so I chose to do that. And the other thing that we are discussing today will be the Boulder shooting suspect, how it destroys the last narrative <laughs> about white Asian hate crimes. Sweet like of a juice. And we're going to talk about the Supreme Court being the enemy of the Constitution of the United States and not understanding the definitions of basic English words. But before we begin, uh, censorship's getting out of control. Uh, people are getting censored left, right, and sideways for a variety of different things. Some of them make sense. Some of them don't make sense. Um, mine's got a whole lolly porn thing going on because it's borderline child porn. And, I mean, I don't know what it's technically classified as. But sexualizing the image of children and sexualizing the image of children, but that's not what we're talking about here. Um, but the best way to support us is to go directly to our own website. We're building our own platform, trying to insulate us from this. Um, even if you just view the free content from there by just becoming a member of joining the subscribers email list, get access to enter a monthly the window shirt every month. Uh, we'll consider joining five dollars a month and getting becoming a member and getting extra member benefits and stuff. To help, but it, it's really how you're going to help keep this um, channel going in the future because I don't know what's I don't know how the how we're going to make it through through all this. But let's get into this um this first topic, which is uh, superbugs kill doctors. Maybe partly responsible for the superbugs, right? So uh, superbugs kill more than thirty five thousand people in the U S. each year. Doctors may be partially to blame. Study such. Suggests as medical community finds treatments to combat the coronavirus, another deadly enemy continues to lurk in the hospitals across the country. Antibiotic resistance infections. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention calls antibiotic resistance one of the biggest public health challenges of our time. And a new study suggests doctors may be partially to blame for its prevalence. Uh, yeah, that this has been bad problem. There's like um, a strain of tuberculosis going around that can be uh, if you don't like. Basically, if you get tuberculosis, you have to take this ridiculous medicine for like nine months. And if, even if even if you don't show signs of it, if you just like said that you were exposed, they make you take it. Because like if, if it is hidden dormant and you don't finish the medicine, it can come back. It comes back stronger and like it, it with and tuberculosis is bad. Um, the study published last week in the peer-reviewed journal of JAMA Network Open found more than half of the antibiotics prescribed in hospitals were not consistent with recommendations alarming health experts who say inappropriate prescribing medication contributes to antibiotic resistance. So um, I will willy-nilly take a pill for that type of society Take a vaccine for that. Take a pill for that. Take a drug for that. It's causing this problem. We're over-medicating ourselves. Um, the study, yeah, so like start the day smarter, get all your news you need, yeah, whatever. We're in the antibiotic crisis. Many call this the silent pandemic going on concurrently with the coronavirus pandemic. So Dr. Deborah Goff, infectious clinical pharmacist and professor of pharmacy who leads antibiotic resistance efforts at the Ohio State Wexner Medical. But nobody's, we don't really care about this, right? In the agency, we're just going to throw more drugs at it. In the agency, study researchers looked at 1,566 patients who received antibiotics and found that 55.9% of them shouldn't have received them based on practice guidelines. Guidelines didn't support prescribing antibiotics to 79.5% of patients who were treated for community-acquired pneumonia and 76.8% of patients who were treated for urinary tract infection. <laughs> it's because Americans, we go over there and we're like, give me a pill for that. I don't care what, what ails me. I don't want to adjust my exercise or my food habits and get on un, fat and whatnot. This pain, give me pain. Give me medicine. Give me medicine. Give me drugs. Give me drugs. Give me drugs. Prescriptions were flagged if there were no document signs or symptoms. That's the American way of infection. No lab results or antibiotic if prescribed longer than necessary. Out of the patients that may have been unnecessary prescribed antibiotics, more than 50% lacked document infectious signs or symptoms, and nearly 60% were given medications for the excessive duration. 
Oh, but medicating the American way. Patients aren't often given antibiotics when they're hospitalized and then prescribe the new course of antibiotics when they're discharged. Gov says leading them back to take med- take medications for up to two weeks. These football schools of antibiotic duration, 7, 10, 14 days, were not developed based on clinical outcome studies. Those durations were just how the researchers designed the study, she said. But there's data clearly showing that these traditional durations are no longer necessary. Shorter is better. 31 million Americans suffer from osteoporosis. That's something different. Why do you, like, give me extra sh- here? Taking antibiotics longer than necessary increases the patient's chance of developing antibiotic resistance by Dr. Ryan Shields, an infectious disease, or said, not by, pharmacist, associate director of the University of Pittsburgh Center, Medical Center of Antibiotics Stewardship Program. This occurs when germs like bacteria and fungi develop the ability to defeat the brain's the drugs designed to kill them, according to the CDC. Studies have shown patients with antibiotic resistant infections are at an increased risk of worse clinical outcomes, such as severe disease, death, and compared to patients with infections that can be treated with antibiotics. This may be due to significantly longer hospital stays, higher risk for treatment failure, and increased risk for ongoing surgery, Soft said. According to CDC, more than 35,000 people from antibiotic resistance infections in the each year dam. That's been a lot of people for just that. Yeah, that's a lot of people, man. Um, nobody's fucking ever talking about that. It's never on the news or anything. That's fucking news. They're not a deadly, they're not only deadly, but costly. According to January report by the CDC and the University of Utah, six multi-drug resistant pathogens are estimated to cost the U.S. more than $4.6 billion annually. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of money. Every day they're in the hospital consuming resources, Scott said, added all up. Antibiotic resistance costs a lot of money. Additionally, antibiotics that specifically address antibiotic resistance pathogens are more expensive than traditional antibiotics running at a price of about 400 to 1000 a day compared to 25 Jesus Christ. The study was conducted between 20, the, the poor people can't afford that, between 2011 to 2015, which means prescribing practices have likely changed since the report has shields of you and PC in 2017, the Joint Commission's put in effect the new accreditation standard for antimicrobial stewardship programs in hospitals to educate staff and practitioners. But antibiotic just we have to do something about the prices because these prices are ridiculous. However, it's not just doctors who carry the responsibility of combating antibiotic resistance infections. Health, it's oftentimes the main, yeah, it's the reason because we come, we're the ones that come get the drugs. When you're paying for a doctor's visit, many are going to the doctor for antibiotic. They pressure the doctor, Gov said they were the consumer, and they also need to be educated because they're drug addicts. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a, a big, huge medical problem that nobody seems to be talking about. And um, it came across my news feed today, so I, I figured I'd share it because um, I had to fight that antibiotic resistant strain of tuberculosis and that. Ain't fucking fun. I'm good. I beat it. I defeated it. I won because my immune system was good. Um, but we we used antibiotics in our fucking cows and like in our because we factory farming because we put the animals in conditions and that filters into our food and stuff and in the environment and it helps make our diseases worse. So uh, we have to unf that mess. I'm just saying. And we are continuing on. We're going to talk about this. Uh, if you haven't heard it, the Boulder shooting, uh, they try it, they they try to blame it on white white people and stuff, but uh, it wasn't white people. Well, let's check this out. So um, we have this news article here from the New York Times: Boulder victims of police officers, grocery store workers, and the sons arrest refugees. Uh, Ten people were shot to death at Colorado grocery store on Monday. The victims included a police officer who was among the first to arrive at the scene. Uh, ten people were killed on Monday when a gunman opened fire at a grocery store in Boulder, Colorado. The authorities said they included a Boulder police officer, a young grocery store worker, and a retiree filling orders for Instacart. Among the victims was Officer Ed Eric Talley, 51, with the Boulder Police Department, who had responded to a barrage of 911 calls among the shooting. Authorities identified the nine other people who were killed as Denny Strong, 20, uh, Nevin Stanisic, I probably butchered that, 23, Ricky Olds, 25, Trelona Barlos Kubaka, 49, I'm, I'm bad with names, Susan Fountain, 59, Terry Leaker, 51, Kevin Mahoney, 61, Lynn Murray, 62, and Jody Walters, 65. And here is what we know so far about their lives. And we're going to talk about each one of these people because I think it's important that we should highlight the victims and not the, the damn fucking 
ass shooter, which wasn't white, by the way, even though they were going to say it's white. Uh, uh, an 11-year-old Boulder Police Department, Eric Kelly, was described as heroic by Chief Massey's Herald the Seton shooting Monday, Monday night. He was the first on scene, and he was fatally shot. Chief Herald said in the news conference, "The world lost a giant. Uh, uh, the world lost a great soul." Said Officer Tally's father, Homer Tally. He was a devoted father, seven kids, the youngest of seven, and the oldest of twenty. And his family was the joy of his life. Officer Tally joined the police force as a second career when he was forty. I like this story actually. Quitting a job in cloud communications, he wanted to serve people. Mister Tally said, it, "It's a breath of fresh air that we're not like focusing on the fucking negative and shit." You know what? All kids want to be policeman in many ways he was a big kid uh, on twitter a woman described herself as the officer's sister kirsten and she was heartbroken i cannot explain how beautiful he was and devastating losses to so many fly high my sweet brother you always wanted to be a pilot damn colorblindness so uh, uh, rest in peace bro chris lane who works at an at&t store in boulder met officer tally after so this is more about officer tally right we're not gonna we want to we're going to be here forever if we keep on. So now we have uh, Ricky Olds. She brought life to the family. We got this woman, 25-year-old, who loved outdoors, was a front-end manager at King Scoopers, where she had worked for about seven or eight years, her Uncle Robert Olds said. She was an energetic, bubbly, and happy-go-lucky young woman who brought life to the family, her uncle said, and she had preserved despite hardship. She was the oldest of three siblings and was raised by her grandparents in Lafayette, Colorado, he said. Mr. Olds described his niece as strong and independent woman who enjoyed hiking and camping. She liked spending time with friends and family and often accompanied him and her cousins to their baseball games. So let's move on. They, did, they said more about the officer. It's kind of lame. Lynn Murray, former magazine photo director. Lynn Murray, 62, a former photo director and mother of two, was a grocery store on Monday filling an Instacart order, which she had enjoyed doing to help people since her retirement. She was an amazing woman, probably the kindest person I've ever known. Her husband said, these are all awesome people that get killed, which is sad. Mrs. Murray was a former photo director for several magazines in New York. Her husband said the couple moved from New York in 2002 to first to Stowart, Florida, and then to Colorado to raise their children. I just want her to be remembered as just as this amazing, amazing comet spending 62 years flying across the sky. That's just sad that people like these are gone. Uh, now we have the Tarola Bart Kawawik, I'm sorry, I butchered that, a shop manager newly engaged, so this woman was going to get married, no, she can't get married, this is just, we don't really have time to talk about all of these people, and they're not going to talk about all the, the, like, the shooter here, this, this article, if you want it, there'll be a link in the description, you can read about these people, and you should read about these people, and we'll, we'll flash them on the screen bit, so people can, if they want to pause and read them here, they can pause and read them here. But we really, really, really got to, like, the left's saying it's Asian hate crimes, right? White Asian hate crimes. But I'm pretty sure this the shooter, right? This was the Al, the Al, Al Sasami guy. Um, let's look that up. Do, 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 Colorado shooter. Boom. Yeah, Ahmad Allah Awali Alisa. So it was a Syrian refugee shooting and killing a bunch of white fucking people, but somehow it's white on Asian hate crime. Or whiteness. That's what the left does. And that's what I wanted to highlight, and I'm glad I was able to highlight that, highlight that with an article that doesn't focus on this dude baggery. But he was a Syrian refugee. He was anti-Trump. This happened shortly before, um, shortly after they, we bombed Syria, which we shouldn't have done, and he's the Syrian refugee, and his family's also being investigated, and he, there's deleted tweets of him that were archived on the internet saying that there was more than one shooter there, like, that, before it happened, so, like, they, they, this was probably a retaliatory attack, this looks like it's brown on white violence. <laughs> Uh, this black, white, brown, yellow, polka-dotted argument is retarded. <laughs> it's just terrorists attacking people. If that if he lived in that area and that area had to be filled with and black people, it would have been him on black people. It would that, that's just him. It was him on Americans because a retaliatory attack against because we attacked Syria. 